So, we'll call this regular City Council meeting on Tuesday, April the 2nd, 2019. Order, everybody please stand and please pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You two ladies back there, did y'all want to speak on something, or are you just here to hear? Because I don't, did they sign up, Neil? No. We didn't sign up. They're on the agenda. Should we? Are they on the agenda? We are with the Guadalupe Valley Family Violence Shelter, and we're here for the proclamation. I don't have you on the agenda. No? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Did you, Phil, did you turn in a request to be on the agenda? I thought I did. I don't have you. I, I know. I mean, it's very short. I know I don't have you on it. Okay. Good to know. Or do you want to still speak? I mean, you can still speak. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I hadn't planned on speaking. I had just planned on being here to represent the shelter for the proclamation. But you came last year, right? I, I came in October, yeah, for the domestic violence proclamation. So is this one different? This one is for sexual assault awareness and prevention. Well, if you get the thing, they yeah. can sign up and then we'll put them on the, well, the next agenda. The next agenda. Um, is that going to be? Then is that going to be in May? In May. Okay. Um, the awareness month is April, so <laughs> that wouldn't um, it wouldn't do. Well, next That's time maybe you'll send it a month before, so we can have it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I I spent an entire day uh, coordinating with all of the different city council. I didn't speak to you. Like and that. so, yeah, yeah this it, one. it yeah, probably one. just fell through the cracks. I probably just looked at the date of the meeting, put it on the calendar before I contacted you. So that's my fault. Not a problem. Okay. Carry on. Okay, thank you. Number four, citizens to be heard. Anybody? Okay, go ahead. And seven. Well, good evening. It's nice to be here and to see all of you all. Uh, I know that you know that I'm one of Wilson County uh, directors on the Evergreen Underground Water Conservation District. And I have been working to protect Wilson County's water since 1999. <laughs> I said that out loud today. It was like, oh my goodness. Starting with the, the struggle against putting a reservoir in the middle of the county and sending 60,000 acre feet of our groundwater to San Antonio and, and some of the other wonderful plans that they had for us. And we have continued to work on, uh, with efforts to continue to protect the Cibolo, which is a, is a big thing, and the springs at Sutherland Springs, and to, to limit the amount of uh, injection wells going into our county to go into our reservoir. And during that time, I have also attended and participated throughout all of those years in all of the regional, the, the southwestern uh, Texas regional water planning group meetings that they have uh, that plan all of the state water planning. So, um, and as a director on the Evergreen, I have served on um, you know, all of the committees, rules, budgets, scholarship. I chair the scholarship committee, as a matter of fact. And I'm currently the secretary treasurer of the board. And I also represent the Evergreen on the Groundwater Management Area 13 group, which is another state designated water planning thing that, that is based on our aquifers. So everybody on the Cariso aquifer is in Groundwater Management Area 13. And that puts me in a position to now sit on the regional board as a voting member representing the groundwater management area, which is great because it gives us another voice. It gives the, the rural area another voice, which we desperately need on the region L. And I'm telling you all this because we have an election on the board, and I have um, drawn an opponent uh, in this election. And also, I'm telling you because Stockdale has always stepped up on the water issues. I mean, I throughout all these years, I always know that I can count on Scott to get out there and do what needs to be done. So again, I'm here asking for your support and for your vote. 
And the election is Saturday the 4th of May, and it will be at the ISD administration, Stockdale administration. They're, they're piggybacking the Evergreen election with the city council and the school boards this year, which is great because it, it gives everybody the chance. They don't have to run all over the county to vote. And there will be early voting from um, the 22nd to the 30th, and that will be in Floresville and in Lavernia at the city hall. And there'll be two days, and that'll just be normal eight to five hours, but there will be two days of extended voting. And I've brought you all some information about that during that time. So hopefully we'll get everybody out to vote. It's hard to get everybody excited about an evergreen in a school board election, but I'm doing my best. And with uh, the, the two days of extended hours, I think that will help too. You know, I have to say that it's been an honor and a privilege to serve on the Evergreen all these years and to represent Wilson County and, and, and our area. And I'm really proud of the work that the Evergreen's been doing in the last few years. And I want to let you all know they have done a huge amount of work with the scientific databases, big studies on our aquifers, with our technical um, and um, uh, computer technical stuff. We've got uh, some uh, GPS track mapping capabilities now. We have some transducers in our monitoring wells that are real time. That's very cool. You know, you can, they can tell at every 15 minutes what the water levels are. And they've set up a monitoring system all across the four counties of the district to keep an eye on the water levels. They also um, have a new downhole camera, which is real busy. Everybody loves that. If you have a well problem, they'll come out and shoot the camera down. So it's a, and one really important thing that they've done is that we have gotten all of the oil companies to agree to go come in for production permits. You know that the oil companies have get their drilling permits from the Railroad Commission. We have no say over it. But after they drill their well, if they want to keep using our water, then they have to get come get a production permit, live by our rules, and have the have all of those things. And that has been a real fight. <laughs> but we've done it, and I'm proud of that. So on, we've got great educational programs that start, you know, at the third grade level and go all the way for college scholarships. And we've done lots of outreach and things. We did the home and sponsored the home and garden show. At one of the sponsors at last month out at this stock show, uh, the show barn, or no, the, what is that? The, event, they call it? the event center. Yes, thank you. I can't keep up. But so I am I am very proud of, of uh, all of the things that, that we've been working on. And I would really appreciate uh, your support and your vote. And I brought everybody a little, a little flyer that just tells basic information plus the voting information. So. Thank you. Good luck. Well, thank you. I, I don't know my opponent, but I think that's primarily because I've never seen him in a water meeting, <laughs> which is kind of an interesting approach. <laughs> you have enough, but not all. I think so. I okay. think so. Looks like it. I've got them in my. Will those dates be put in a paper? Uh, yes, sir. And I've, I've got more of these in my, in my little satchel. I gave your mom a bunch of them. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I have some more in here. Yeah. But thank you for your, for your help. Thank you. We'll go on to number five. Discussion and action to approve minutes for the previous meeting held on March 19, 2009. Discussion and action on selecting an engineering firm to assist the city of Stockdale in applying for a wastewater facility permit that is due by March 2020. We had two people that submitted proposals. Uh, now that Intrepid and LNV engineers, yeah. of course, both of them are the engineering firms that we're accustomed to. To the and Intrepid, they 
said their quote was not to exceed 15,000. Uh, the LNV, their proposal was for $10,000. A lump sum basis service fee of $10,000. And I'll ask the city manager which one he recommends. <coughs> There's no doubt which one I'm going to do. And I'm assured that the reason that the one is uh, LMV four years ago assisted just in applying for that wastewater permit at that period of time. So basically all they'll be doing is changing dates and uh, trying to keep everything as so. So from my desk, it's my recommendation that we accept the proposal from LMV Engineering uh, to assist us in that wastewater permit application WQ 00102 We have a motion to approve LMB for that long number. I make a motion to We have a motion by Councilwoman Adams. Okay. Second. Second by Councilwoman Lambic. <laughs> All in favor? <clears throat> motion passes in Addison. Number seven, discussion and action to accept or decline the 2019 customer price index adjustment to municipality telecommunications right of way access line rates. I read that, but I know it's 1.1. What? Tell me something about that, because I really don't know much about that. I mean, Six years ago, no, eight years ago. Whenever the ESD was formed, uh, we we passed a telecommunications uh, excise tax, which puts the tax on uh, <coughs> central te uh, telephone companies' uh, telephone service. For instance, as you go over our sales tax revenue and all those different uh, companies, Verizon, CenturyLink, uh, Amazon, uh, Cricket, all those, there's a sales tax that if you pass that telecommunications tax that you had the right to collect those taxes and that's what that pertains to. So with the PC through the Utilities Commission, as you read in there, that we, if we don't do anything, we're going to automatically receive the uh, the adjustment from the consumer pricing yes. They increase, right? They increase. If we don't want to accept the price consumer price index adjustment increase, then we need to make contact. So it went up a penny all the way across. Basically. But that money does come back to us. The money does yeah. come back to us. Yeah. At first I was against it. But it Correct. turned out to be a good thing. It's, there again, our sales tax report that I, when, when I am able to get to the person to get it, 270 pages long. And Can some of them. So the tax is assessed how? Through sales tax off of the, the, the phone bill. Phone bill, uh, internet know. services, uh, those are the two basic ones. Would it be cell phone, landline, telecommunications? You can see that on your bill. It always says right away. And it may be ten cents. It may be, you know, some of the companies that there may be one person that uses uh, track phone. Uh, there may be one person that uses a track phone in town, and as they pay their bill, it may collect twelve cents a month for twelve months, and so. You know, their portion that they pay the city is like a dollar twenty cents, but there's hundreds of them. Yeah. So, you know, I, off the top of my head, of course, Ray and I looked at the unit, especially whenever we were trying to decide whether well, or not GDEC net owed us sales tax revenue or not and trying to get that. Uh, but there's numerous, and by not accepting it, I, to bring it to your attention, it would be detriment to our sales tax revenue. Mm -hmm. 
we don't if we don't do anything it means we accept it. Yes. yes. If you don't do anything. It means we accept it. In your motion, no, we don't even need it. And it will not, if we don't respond, that means that we accept it. It'll automatically go up. But if we're going to decline it, we need the motion. I think they'll keep it. Yeah. 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 It's from my desk. You know, our sales tax revenue, we're banging right there at $29,000, $30,000 a month. <clears throat> and I expect them to, to average out this. This year at 30,000. Well, as a council, you can just make the motion to accept to that's what you want, you know. And then, of course, we're not going to respond to this. It's just going to automatically go. I make a motion that we accept the uh, consumer price index adjustment, index adjustment to the telecommunications line of access line rates. We have a motion by Council of Southern. I'll second it. But I was saying that that's what Ben, all in favor, motion passes to manage. That's 30000 for just this piece? No. No, no, no. Oh, no. Total, total. Oh, okay. Wow. I would say out of the 30000 <laughs> probably <laughs> two, okay. between five and 10%. <laughs> no, Excuse me. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but, but he accepts. <laughs> but you'd be surprised at how many, like, like you said, it's 20, 270 pages of pages people long. Yeah. that we get sales tax from. You think, well, it's just this store or this store, but it's all this, when you Christmas shop online at Christmas, that's where we get it. A big shop now. That's all I do is shop online. Me too. Well, and that's my wife, I mean. Yeah. Well, luckily, that legislation was passed to where we were entitled to those, those incomes. Okay. Number eight, discussion of action from the 2012 International Fire Code Section 506-1 pertaining to key boxes. Did y'all receive your copies of those for that International Fire Code? I did. Okay. And I, I'm in a catch-22 on this, and I'll be the first one to tell you. I tell you that this is not an anxiety that we deal, I deal with, and the fire marshal's office deal. They're getting in uh, the fire chief and the fire marshal's office. Edwin Baker, uh, you know, basically his uh, I, his feedback and comments from the last meeting is. It doesn't matter to him as long as we get some kind of documentation from the owner stating that if we have to, that you understand that uh, we're going to make damage to the building. That's how I feel. I felt this way before. It should be the owner's choice if they have a lot box or not. But the law states, as you read, I, I made you copy of the yeah, law and the amendment, but the law but, that we accepted. And they do, but we grandfathered everybody. We did, but legally, we and terminology, we were supposed to. When you to go me, back to the minutes. And I called some other towns, they have the same problem. Exactly. And Laverne, you just opened that can of water. Exactly, you're right. Because Yvonne and I had a discussion on it uh, two months ago whenever the Chamber of Commerce did about it. And of course, they were, the fire department had made their presentation or whatever. And the people were still in the positive manner. And my response to Yvonne is, that's a can of worms that's going to make you have more gray areas. I, I just feel like it should be the owner's choice. I mean, this if they really have their door knocked down, that's fine. And they're, you know, I mean. It says the fire code official is authorized to acquire. But when you read the law back in it 506.1, that, that, is that the amendment? Yeah. That's what we passed in 2012. It is? We, we passed 506.1, yeah, 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 yeah. the change to read as the following. But when you come back to section 506, key boxes, that's how it reads. Where required. It's authorized to require. That's right. Authorized to require. It's not. It's kind of on words. Correct. Because when you start to read, it says where required. That's with the first two words. And that sort of puts me. It, here's my thoughts. Let me just tell you, because I got all day to think about it. Is that the reason I think we're in a catch-22 is that a business comes in, 
And if something catches on fire, and it catches somebody else on fire, and somebody else gets in trouble because we couldn't get to a key box, because they didn't have a key box, yeah. are we, the city, negligent? Wow. Are the key boxes empty for some reason? Yeah, I mean, but that's where, and then I see the owner's side in that, and in, in that I got a million dollar business, and I'm going to leave a key here where Ray Wolf can just go up there, open it up, and get whatever I want out of it. You can't, that because they're, they're again, that's what they assume, and that's not how it's handled. There is a key box in the engine, and only two, maybe three, have access to that. And I know that that's what owners have a problem with, is that, because I've heard that same thing. And so my deal would be, if it's legal, and, and this is where I'm getting at, is, and the farmer also brought it up about a notarized statement that they would, they don't want it, and they will take the liability. Okay, but I want on there, when they say they'll take the liability, if it's legal, I'd like for them to have to list us as an additional insurer on their policy, so in case there is something that comes back on the citizens of Stockdale because we didn't do what this. They do it legally. That's right. If it's legal, I'm saying if it's legal, then we have something that we could say, okay, here's your notice. You list us as additional insurance every year. You'll bring a copy of that. And if it is a bad fire and it something happens to another property next to you because we couldn't get in there and that property owner wants to sue us, we are listed on your insurance policy as additional insurance so that your insurance has to pay our claim that if we're sick, if it's legal. I mean, I, I've gone over this, trying to figure out, and then that, because the last thing we want to be is negligent, gross negligent on something, and then it comes back on the city and hurts the citizens of Stockton. I mean, that's just an ideal. There's a lot of other ideals out there, so I'm just telling you what I'd like to explore before we because or we can just leave it at key boxes I mean I'm just I want to do some more calling because I was called Universal City they didn't call me back I want to make sure that what we think is legal is legal you're you, we would be the only community I feel of our size that are dealing with this issue. Universal City is a different, it's, different, it's a different deal because they have a paid right, service, right. okay? I just um, want to see what their firebox, they, they, they don't like them either. It all depends, okay. It works out for, like Edwin made comment, we've been to the school two or three occasions and it works out. It saves okay? the superintendent from having to go there. This and the other thing. But uh, on uh, different individuals, it, it, if we could roll back 25 years, 30 years, uh, the clientele that our neighbors were here, you know, you wouldn't have a problem because we were all volunteers. You know, there again, we have such a new influx of people that were born and bred in different situations and were raised different that you screwed my building. I know, I know. That's why I think we should not do anything tonight, get a little bit more information, find well, out what Ray said. After the other meeting, I had to go and I did the research about how the law read, what that you did or didn't have or whatever, and th that's what the information I could get to you about what you actually did or not. But if you could contact our attorney and ask her, number one, is there no getting out of this? Is a key box and not that. Right. And if but it is. not what it says, though. I know. This is where this wording is. It says authorized to require. That doesn't mean required to. Well, here's okay. your agent. The way I interpret it, our fire marshal's our agent. 
And he's authorized by the city council that when he goes to require that that business is to have that piece of equipment. And I understood that maybe it was that he said he wanted those put there, you know. Is that what you understood? That's right, but whenever the heat started coming on, they started walking back. Okay. I guess maybe I'm naive, but if there is a massive fire, the business owner is going to say, don't worry about it unless you have a key? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. I mean, right. Right. I mean if it's a here's, massive here's fire, the problem. are going to damage the building anyway? Is there well, the instance that goes back to is the one time uh, six years ago, Bramer Express. They have an electrical fire in the building. The person at the time that owned it lived in. Uh, none of the employees were, nobody knew how to get in touch with the family members here, and the man that owned it lived in Blanco. They couldn't get access to the building. So they broke out the front door to be able to get access to extinguish the electrical fire. Mm -hmm. It turns out it costs more to repair the front door than it did to take care of the damage from the electrical fire. Tough. Well, that's, 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 that's too bad. Exactly. I understand. But that's the situation you get into is the questions were, the reason being because the questions were brought up to the fire chief at that time is you cost more, you cost more damage to the building than the fire. So who's lying with that situation? Well, it, that's a, you know, they're again, I've never been in that situation to be able to answer that question. Do nothing. Exactly. Do nothing and just let it burn down. Then Correct. you guys been in trouble. Well, I mean, see, then you, they're again depending on what the business's deductible was. What he's looking at is, okay, well, it doesn't meet my deduct the deductible, and i got to come out of my pocket. They're kind of it, splitting hairs here. I mean, well, I understand, but that's just it, to give you an instance in, for what happens when it comes down and how different people have different opinions. Okay. I think we got two different things we're reading. One is this is what the city passed in 2012. Again, that's where it says as required. That's what was passed by the city council. This page is what's in the code. And what we got to find out is from somebody that's smarter a legal advice is the section 601 key boxes here where required what I don't know what where required means is this where we do have the ability to say yay or nay or is this something that we have to do for 601-1 that comes out of that book those will be questions that I'll forward over with some other questions. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the biggest question. I know what you're saying, but that's what was passed by the city council is what you're reading. Right. It's still here. It's authorized to require. Yeah. It's on both. On both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And if I can tell you, the office is filled with more anxiety questions and arguments over this issue than any. The office, your office? I get more bits out of that. Did you call some that go whatever. Did you call TMM? I did not. Why don't you call them? I tried, I did call them after but they never called them. You know, because I think we all want to do what's right. And, uh, and, uh, so if that's your city policy, or your city ordinance that you do require it and a business won't do it, then what? Well, they're well, subject to be uh, fine. Or you don't issue them a certificate of occupation, and then without a certificate of occupation, and you get no insurance coverage. But one of the biggest questions I have, and what, I know you heard the same thing I did from one of our people is uh, how many lock boxes does the company have to have? It depends on what they're putting. There's, yeah. there's a case where he's going to build a gate and, and that's an entrance, so they, they want to require one there. Plus one at the building itself. 
But my deal would be, if I got a lockbox here, and I have two keys in it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Why do I need three lockboxes, one for this gate, one for this gate, and one for the front door? Mm 